Hi everyone, today we're going to discuss the lesson 4 and we'll be using Microsoft Excel. But before anything else, we will start to discuss the formulas and function. When you say formulas, these are for calculating numerical information just like calculator. There are two types of formulas. The first one is simple formula that contains only one operation and the second one is complex formula contains one or more operations. Formulas and functions have standard operators for formulas. The first one is the plus sign. This means addition. Minus sign. This means subtraction. Asterisk. This means multiplication. Forward slash. This means division. Create means exponents. And equal sign is used to start a formula. So this is an interface of Microsoft Excel. First, we have this tabs and commonly we can name file home insert page layout formulas data review view and you can add more if you want this is the title bar if you will save your document you will save a file name and later on it will show up here this one is the cell reference cell reference is the address of each box that you can see in the Excel area and sheet tabs can be added just click the plus sign so this holds like a page so before anything else let's go back to Microsoft Excel as you can see there are boxes if you click each of this and if you click anywhere it will show up here the cell reference cell reference has a feature that allows you to calculate values from specified cell addresses. A cell address is a combination of letters stands for columns and number stands for rows. Using a cell reference will make your formulas more accurate. Now, to create a formula in our example, we'll use a simple formula and cell reference to calculate the profit gain for a sales report. So example for this one, select cell that will contain the formula in our example. We'll select cell B3. So B and 3 so the intersection this is B B3 now type the equal sign always remember that if you're going to write a formula you'll always start with an equal sign because Excel will only identify equal sign as a part of a formula notice how it appears in both the cell and the formula bar so if we try to put equal sign and then we will click the actual cell or type the cell address of the cell you want to reference first in the formula. So for example, cell B1. A blue border will enclose the reference cell. Type the mathematical operator you want to use in our example. We'll type the minus sign. Type the cell address of the cell you want to reference next in the formula. Cell B2 in our example. A red enclosure will mark the reference cell. Press enter on your keyboard. The formula will be calculated and the value will be displayed in the cell. Notice that the formula did not change in formula bar. So if you check the formula bar, this one is the formula bar, you can only see the formula itself. But automatically in the cell reference, it has the value which has been calculated from the formula. So now, let's try modifying value from a cell reference. The advance of using a cell reference is that you can change the value without touching the formula. What follows is example we used earlier. We changed the value of B2 from 250 to 240. So let's change this one to 240. So take note that the profit gain from the sample we have in the previous example is 30. Press enter and you will see that automatically cell B3 has changed because it has a formula in it so now let's move on to functions a function is predefined formula in excel that performs calculations for a specific value using reference cells excel has different functions for quickly finding the sum average count maximum value and minimum value for a range of cells before using a function there are parts of it which you must first understand and be familiar with so let's be familiar with the parts of a function. 
Let's try to type here. Sam. So for this example, Sam A1 to A5. So a formula will always start with equal sign, if you notice here. Then followed by the function name. So in our example, we have Sam. Then the argument, which is enclosed by parentheses. Using a function, there are functions already defined in Excel. These are examples of functions you would usually use. So the sum, the average, count, max, and mean. So let's move on to another example. The following are the steps for using a function. Select a cell where you want the function. In this example, we'll use the cell C5. Type in the equal sign. Enter the desired function. Excel gives a listed suggested function as you type. In this example, we will use sum. Enter the cell range for the argument inside parentheses. So you need to open. In our example, we'll type C1, then the colon, C4, and close. By the way, if you notice, this one is a colon. When you see a colon, in an argument, this means that it is a range. So from C1 to C4, it will produce a sum of the values inside that range. And you can also see that it has been enclosed with blue borders. Then press enter. The function will be calculated and will be shown in cell C5. So you see this one shows sum C1 to C4. And the total for this is 50. Note, multiple arguments must be separated by a comma. So if you add something on A1 and you add another value on B2 to B4, then you can change the formula. In order for you to have the sum of the different cell references, you can use the comma first. You can click the A1, comma, the B2 to B4, comma, C1 to C4, and then press enter. But before that, you can notice that it has enclosed the values with a transparent shape. So see, it has now changed with the sum of all the values you included in your formula. Now, let's explore the function library. Well, there are hundreds of functions in Excel, we do not need to memorize them all, but exploring some of the different types of functions will be helpful as you create new projects. Functions are grouped per type of data they manipulate. They are in Functions Library under the Formulas tab. So, here are the tabs in Excel. So, if you click Formulas tab, you can see here the different types of built-in functions. The insert function command, if you're having a hard time finding the right function to use, the insert function command can help you. It allows you to search for functions using keywords. But while it can be useful, this command is sometimes difficult to use. If you're new in the use of functions, you may have more success browsing the function library. For more advanced users, however, this insert function command can be a powerful way to find a function quickly. Now, how to use the insert function command? So this is the insert function. And this one are the given formula function library. So how can we use the insert function command? In the following example, we want to find a function that will count total number of students in a class list. We cannot use the count function since it only counts cells with numerical information and we only have the column with names. So this is another example. So this is a table that has name and names of the student here and and another cell here that shows total number of students now select the cell that will contain the function in this example we will use the cell b12 so b and 12 so this one select insert function command in formulas tab so this one just click an insert function dialog box will show up so this one Type a few keywords that will describe what function you want or select a category, then click Go. In this example, we will use the word count to describe the function. So just type count. 
then go. So these are the function that will show up when you search for a certain function. Notice that the list of function is updated per description. Review the results and choose the best function that would suit what you need. In this example, count A is used. So count A counts the number of cells in a range that are not empty. So as long as it's not empty, it will count. So click OK. A function arguments dialog box will appear. You can either enter or click the cells you want to include. Here, we select cell A3 up to A10. And the function will be calculated and the result will be displayed in the cell. So just click OK. So the number of students is 8. So it just counted. As long as it's not empty, it will count the highlighted part. But if you delete one, sample, I'm going to delete Gene. So automatically, it will change the total numbers of students since it will only count if the cell is not empty. Next, we will move to sorting. One of the features of Excel is that you can manage information, you can quickly sort your data alphabetically, numerically, and many other ways. So there are types of sorting, sort sheet, sort range. Sort sheet, sort all data in your worksheet by one column. Related information is kept together when sorted. An example of this is a list of students to be arranged according to their class number. Sort range sorts the data in a range of cells which can be helpful when working with a sheet that contains several tables. Only the contents of the table will be sorted. Sorting a range will not affect other content on the worksheet. How to sort an MS Excel sheet? In the following example, we will sort a class alphabetically according to last name. So first, select a cell in the set you want to sort in this example. We'll use cell B3. Click the ascending command to sort from A to Z or the descending command to sort C to A from the data tab. In this example, we'll use the ascending command. So just click, go to data tab, and just click if you want to sort it in an ascending or descending command. In this example, we'll use the ascending command. The worksheet will now be sorted alphabetically by the last name of the students. Now let's move on to another sort type, the sort range. In our example, we'll select a separate table in our class record to sort the days a student was absent. Select cell range you want to sort in our example. We'll select, we'll select cell range so A13 to C16. Click the sort command in the data tab. A sort dialog box will appear. Select a column you want to sort by in this example. Sort by, click, then we'll use the last name. Decide if the sort will be ascending or descending order. In this example, we'll use ascending. So if you click this one, OK. So notice this table is not affected by this range or the sort range. Next, we'll move on to filtering. One of the features of Excel is to narrow down data in your worksheet allowing you to view only the information you need. This feature is called filter. How to filter data. So here are the steps in filtering data in Excel. First, in order for filtering to work, your worksheet must have a header row which is used to identify the column. Go to data tab and click filter. So a drop down arrow will appear in the rightmost side of the header cell for each column. Click the drop-down arrow for the column you want to filter. A filter menu will appear. So let's try B2 and a dialog box will be like this. Check the boxes next to the data you only want to display then click OK. So for this example, if you want to just select beverage and click OK, so you will only see those type of beverage. So the other type has been hidden. To clear a filter, click the drop down arrow for the filter you want to clear. In our example, we'll clear the filter in column B. So for this example, just click and clear filter from type. The filter will be cleared from the column and previously hidden data will be displayed. And now, Let's move on to advanced filter. Advanced number filters allow you to manipulate number data in different ways. 
In this example, we will display only certain types of equipment based on the range of ID numbers. First, select the Data tab on the ribbon, then click the Filter command. A drop-down arrow will appear in the header cell for each column. Note, if you've already added filters to your worksheet, you can skip this step. So for our example, we already have applied the filter and the drop-down icon has been added to the headers. Click the drop-down arrow for the column you want to filter in our example. We'll filter column A to view only certain range of ID numbers. So the filter menu will appear. Hover the mouse over the number filters and select the desired number. Filter from the drop-down menu. So we will try the number filters. So click number filters and then let's try between. So the ID number is greater than or equal to 1004. Let's try this range. And and is less than or equal to 1008. So in this part, you select and. So it qualifies all three arguments. If you set it to or, it will just select either this one or this one. So let's try and and click OK. In the number filters, 1004 and 1008. So it will only display those of the number range you have given. Next topic is about chart. Sometimes it is difficult to interpret Excel workbooks which have a lot of data. A chart is graphical representations of your workbook data that's easier to visualize for comparisons and trends. So here, you just click the insert tab and see here the charts. So let's try to explore first. We have column charts. This chart uses vertical bars to represent data. They are most frequently used for comparing information. Next is line. This chart is ideal for showing trends. The data points are connected by lines, making it easier to see the increase or decrease of value over time. Then, pie. This chart is used to compare proportions. It depicts the values that makes a percentage of a whole and are shown as slices of a pie. Bar. This chart is just like the column chart but uses horizontal bars instead. Area. This chart is like the line chart except that the areas under the lines are shaded. And surface. This chart allows you to display data in 3D landscape. It lets you see a variety of information at the same time. This works best with large data sets. So let's try inserting chart. Select the cells that you want to include in your chart, including the column, titles, and row labels. So let's select the data. Select the desired chart command from the insert tab. So we'll try to select the recommended charts and select the clustered column and click OK. Now, in order for you to change a chart types, if you think that your chart is not suited for the data you have, so click design and change chart type. And if you want to select another type, say let's try the bar and click OK. So automatically it will change into a different chart type. Now, let's try to move a chart. Whenever you insert a new chart, it will appear as an object in the same worksheet that contains its source data. You can move the chart to a new worksheet to help keep your data organized. Select the chart you want to move. So let's select this one. Select Move Chart from the Design tab. Let's click Move Chart. Then the Move Chart dialog box will appear. Select the desired location for the chart then click OK. In our example, we'll choose to use New Sheet which will create a new worksheet. So click New Sheet then click OK. So a sheet named Chart 1 will contain the chart that has been moved from the sheet that contains the chart previously. So that's it. We already discussed some of the advanced lesson on Microsoft Excel. Hope you learned something for this week and enjoy your day. Thanks!